here. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? Can you hear us online? Awesome. So that means everyone got to hear about me, not my daughter, not finding a job. So if anyone knows, I would be. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Brooke Dickhart. I am the executive director of the Joel Fund, and we are one of the lead agencies that plans the um, Greater Triangle VMFA meetings. We have some new people online joining us. So what I would like to do is review our mission and objectives. Um, so the VMFA was started by a group of um, veterans and organizations. We had a steering committee for about a year. So, and collectively we came up with the mission to strengthen the local veteran and military community. And our objectives are to identify gaps, opportunities and barriers in service to improve service for veterans and military families. We coordinate information on services for veterans and military families. And we educate veterans, military families and community advocates on community-based efforts in suicide prevention. So this month, our topic of discussion is veteran health and health care. Um, and that's such a broad category. So we try to mix it up. Sometimes we have representatives from the VA. Um, this time it's just community organizations. So um, what I would like to do first is we're gonna go around um, in the room and we'll do introductions. Mm -hmm. You'll just give us your name, um, what organization you're with and um, what your military affiliation is. So um, I guess I should say my dad was in the Navy and um, he suffered from PTSD and that's how I got into doing this work. So um, Isabella. Hi, I'm Isabella Brzezinski. I'm the Operation Art Program Manager for the Joel Fund, uh, and my dad is an Army veteran. Uh, my name is Landry Young. I'm the Marketing and Outreach Manager for the Joel Fund, and I'm a FMG Military Spouse. Um, Jessica Strimo with Back of the Saddle, Equine Services for Heroes. Um, my father in law served four tours in Vietnam, and we help here a few of the forces. My name is Terry Morris, and I'm the executive director of Vets Prevention United, meaning veterinarians for Veterans United. Uh, we're a group of veterinarians and volunteers that have come together to rescue animals from shelters or rescue. Partners deal with veterans who are suffering from an emotional and or physical disability and teach them how to train their own service dogs. And I am an Air Force uh, brat, <laughs> gold star daughter. <laughs> My father was a Tuskegee B-52 bomber pilot, still when I was three. Mm -hmm. And I've dedicated this program to he and my sister, who is also a Tuskegee pilot. We followed in his footsteps. Wow, that's awesome. Hi, I'm Mike Peterson. I'm a regional liaison for the county engagement team at Blue Cross and Blue Shield in North Carolina. Um, I am not a veteran, but I'm an enormous fan of the Joel Fund, and uh, in my role, I uh, get to build a lot of supportive relationships with various veterans organizations, and uh, I'm honored to be able to do so. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm Adam Waters. I'm a uh, Medicare consultant with the Shield of North Carolina, and uh, I'm also a, a Navy combat veteran. Awesome. Welcome. Okay, we will go online. Elton, you want to go next? The, uh, Hi, I'm uh, Elton Corbett. I'm with the Durham chapter of Disabled American Veterans. I'm um, a uh, service officer and also the commander. I'm a 20-year uh, Air Force veteran, a retired veteran. Thanks, Elton. Thank you. Danny? Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm um, interning with the Joe Fund. Uh, I was in the military. I was in the Army. I was in 19 Delta for a few years, and uh you know, I had some battles, and thanks to the Joel Fund, I'm you know, facilitating my internship and uh, towards a bachelor's degree in social work. So big shout out, love the Joel Fund, love what Brooke's doing, total support here, and thank you all for coming and participating in this. Thank you. Jared? Hey, everybody. My name is Jared Arceo. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I serve as a forward observer and uh, was attached with 3-6 Marines. Um, I currently work as the Veterans and First Responders Outreach for Hopeway. We're a mental and behavioral health facility here in Charlotte. We provide evidence-based treatment for veterans and first responders going through challenges and focusing on getting them the help that they need to get away from the suicide and just getting that uh, statistic down. So thanks for having me here. Thank you. Allie? Hi, everyone. I'm Allie Anderson. I'm the community care manager here at the Joel Fund. Um, I'm an active duty Army spouse and also an Air Force brat to two veterans. Um, so very excited to be here. 
Thank you. Alexa. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexa McCann. I work at Holly Hill Hospital. We are a mental health psychiatric facility located here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I am the point of contact for our facilities here in the Raleigh-Durham-Chapel Hill area. Thank you. Renee? Is she, are you able to introduce yourself? I'm not sure. What, we'll come back. Kamisha? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kamisha Palana. I work with Wake County Recovery Court, which is an adult treatment court program for those involved in the justice system due to a substance use um, issue. I am a Marine brat. Um, I was born into it and my dad retired my senior year in Cary, North Carolina. Um, veterans are dear to my heart. Of course, growing up in it all my life and I've worked with homeless vets part-time and whatnot. Um, in Durham, but I, I support the Joel Fund. I think Brooke is doing amazing work. I'm very excited about what happened a couple of weeks ago at the meeting, um, and I'm sure she's gonna be talking about it soon, but it's a pleasure to meet everyone. Thank you. Caleb? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Caleb Purdy. I am the County Engagement Intern at Blue Cross. Right now, um, I'm working under Julie and I've um, worked with Mike as well, um, kind of just like synthesizing county data and um, insights. And so I'm happy to be here today. And right now I'm at the uh, center in Raleigh uh, doing the senior bingo. So we're just wrapping that up right now. So I hopped on to say hello to everybody. So glad to be here. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Victoria. Hi, um, I'm Victoria Knott. I'm an employment counselor with the National Guard Employment Center. I am not a veteran, um, come from a family of many, many veterans. Um, and I've been working with veterans in one way or another for probably about 20 years now. Thank you. Kimberly? Oh, you're muted. Okay. Hi, I'm Kimberly Jones Scott. I am the manager of FEP Sales and Field Service. And uh, although I'm not a veteran, my dad was, he uh, was in the Army. And when he got out of the Army, he went into the Army National Guard. So we do a lot of um, work with the county engagement team. And um, I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. Matt, are you able to introduce yourself? Here we go. Hey, yep. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Matt DeVivo, Reserve Component Transition Assistance Advisor for all components and 30-year Army retiree and veteran. Thanks, Matt. Tom? Yeah, good afternoon, folks. Um, my name's Tom Brown. I'm a Army combat disabled vet. I met uh, some of the members of the Vets to Vets program at a, a function in Durham. I uh, got the newsletter from Dr. Morris. Appreciate that. And it's my first event. I just want to hang out and see what it's all about and do what I can to support my uh, fellow brothers and sisters. So awesome. thank you. Thank you for being here. Glad to have you. Siobhan? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Siobhan Norris. I am the Division Director for Wake County Veteran Services. Um, and a proud U.S. Army veteran, served four years in the MP Corps, and then come from a long line of military, and also a huge fan of the Joel Fund. I will give you guys your money later. <laughs> <laughs> Julie? Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Julie Knack. I'm a manager on the county engagement team with Mike and Caleb and work with Kimberly. I'm just happy to be listening in today. Thank you. Thank you. Ann? Good afternoon. My name is Ann Gasparini, and I am the Interim Community Affairs Manager over at Stop Soldier Suicide. I am a uh, former military spouse of over 27 years, uh, daughter, sibling, uh, mother of veterans. So uh, this is a place where I want to be there and support. Thank you. Thank you. And did you hear I met your daughter? 
I did. And she was like, she's so nice. I'm like, isn't she? I love it. Like, I know like maybe two or three people at Stop Soldier Suicide. It's a pretty big company. And she's like, oh, my mom works at Stop Soldier Suicide. And I was like, who's your mom? <laughs> I just knew it right away. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So I will, um, since Kamisha kind of alluded to it, I will share. So we have been under contract on land in Rollsville to build a veteran community center. Um, we, uh, it's been almost a year and two weeks ago or three weeks ago, Rollsville Board of Commissioners unanimously passed to rezone the land commercial. And then we closed last week. So we had um, a huge showing of veterans in the meeting. We had, um, the whole room was full and there was no way I wanted them to be able to say no and they didn't. And so we have closed and now we're working on the site development plan and it's moving along. So um, I just wanna say thanks to everyone for the support and all their kind words at the start of this meeting. So thank you. Um, and I also wanna give a shout out to Blue Cross Blue Shield for representing today. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for, for everyone coming out. Um, yeah, it's awesome. So our converse, our topic today, as I mentioned, is health and healthcare. And so what I would like us to do, because we have three um, very different topics underneath that umbrella, um, I'm going to start with Dr. Morris here in person. Dr. Terry, if you will, please um, talk to us a little bit about Vets to Vets United. And um, yeah, tell us what you all do. Sure. Um, so Vets Vets United was uh, started in 2012. Um, I saw a, a need here in North Carolina. Um, North Carolina has one of the highest populations of veterans um, in the country. And we also, as far as animals were concerned, we have one of the highest euthanasia rates of animals at our shelters. Um, during the time I started the program 12 years ago, we were number one. Uh, now I think we're number three or five. However, I just wanted to do something that I was truly passionate about to give back to um, veterans. And also, I um, have animals in my life. I'm a veterinarian, so of course, um, saving animals, partnering them with veterans, and helping the veterans to train their own service dogs to seem like a beautiful, wonderful mission, um, two passions in one. Um, the training is a two-year program, so uh, once the veterans are partnered with the rescue animal, then they uh, are taken through a two-year training program. So they come to class once a week for approximately two years. Some graduate a little bit before two years, and then some it a little bit after two years. Um, we take them through public access testing, and then we take them through therapy training, and then we finally focus in on task training to complete the service dog requirement. And some people say, well, why don't you take them through therapy training? Well, that's our way to give back to the community. Um, and it also just makes you feel wonderful when you're able to train these dogs to serve other people in need. So we take them to go visit other veterans in the hospital and CLC and hospice. Um, we go take them to uh, your emergency hospitals, all kinds of centers, senior care centers. And when we take those dogs in and we are able to make someone else's day, not only does it make that person's day, it also helps the veteran as well. Um, because it just warms your heart to, to mm -hmm. just see someone else smile because you have um, devoted some time from your day to go in and share your dog with them. So that's why we take them through the therapy program. And then, um, once they satisfy all of those requirements, then we do have a graduation. This year it will be on November the 3rd. Um, and they, the dogs walk down with their little hats with their little tassel. Oh, um, it's really just a wonderful, beautiful uh, celebration and then a reception afterwards. So everyone is uh, invited to come in, um, and, and share in that, that celebration with them. Um, we don't know how many graduates we're going to have this year so far. Everybody's like working hard to get to that finish line. Uh, two have actually already made it. So we know we have like two graduates, maybe four, four more, possibly. <laughs> but we, we'll have to see. Um, and then, you know, if anybody has any questions for me on the program, then I would love to take questions. Um, the health benefits, of course, are huge. 
Uh, we have uh, veterans, and, and again, the prior to starting this program, I kept seeing these testimonies from veterans saying, if I didn't have my dog, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, with the suicide rate at 20 per day, I'm like, okay, you know, we can we can help with that. Mm -hmm. And we've actually had some, some veterans in our program who have um, actually been very close. And however, with the dog, they were able to um, not take that step. So um, it, it's just been really a blessing to be able to see not only the veterans' life improve, but also that of their family members. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for the veteran, it's for the whole family. It's also for spouses. If a spouse needs a service dog due to trauma that they're facing with trying to care for their loved one who has post-traumatic stress or a or physical disability, they also can receive a service dog. Um, we have instances where veterans may have an autistic child in the family. That dog actually helps that child in, in addition to the veteran. Um, in order to evaluate success of the program, we offer function metric surveys, which we um, ask veterans to complete once a year. And they have a series of about 17 questions that we ask, including um, whether or not they um, have see a decrease in the amount of medication they take, a decrease in suicidal ideations, uh, increased socialization, um, and, and several other questions just to measure the impact that our program is making. And we can see since 2017, that's when we first started the survey, the majority of the veterans who are um, in the program are experiencing significant increase in overall um, well-being or health well-being. Um, so it's, it's just been really just an amazing experience for me. And I'd be happy to take any questions and then invite everyone to our 5K9 dog dog coming up on October the 6th. Awesome. And we will share that flyer okay. um, when we do our follow-up email. And okay. I'm sure there will be questions because I'm going to kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to prompt you with more also. Okay. <laughs> so, so Adam, if you don't mind taking a minute to introduce, um, you know, your role um, at Blue Cross and then also the work you do with Medicare. Um, yeah. You know, I've been, um, you know, uh, doing a lot of the vet, veterans, you know, programs as well in, in the community and because it's, uh, uh, I am also uh, in the system. I'm, I have a hundred percent disability rating, and I see where uh, there are certain needs. And, mm -hmm. and I know one for me. Uh, I also have PTSD, and within the last year, I've had three different psychiatrists. You know, so it's sort of hard to build that relationship. So I just want to be out in the community and, and talk to the veterans and find out what their needs are as well, and you know, bring that information back and see where with Blue Cross Blue Shield, even you know. With the company and whole, not just Medicare, where we can, you know, help to fill in some needs there as well. So, um, just being uh, out there and being, you know, part of the uh, of the community is, is uh, mm -hmm. what, what we're excited to do. So, awesome! Um, I love it. I appreciate you sharing that because it's so important to, I think, for people to see and to hear it and say, okay, they can share it. I can too. So, I'm thank you. Lucky ones. Uh, my wife, um, her dad was a uh, retired uh, colonel in the army, so she grew up. You know, around he was uh, a a uh, in Vietnam, and you know uh, he suffered some things too. So she sort of helped guide me through that. You know, you know, seeing certain things. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, you so, <laughs> um, awesome. I'm one of the lucky ones. Not everybody. So like, I lost uh, three shipmates to suicide after a deployment, and you know, it's not dear to my heart. So mm -hmm. anything we can do to help, the general said, with our brothers and sisters, yeah. you know, it's a, a need there. Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, Alexa, do you mind talking about your role at Holly Hill? And um, am, are we allowed to talk about the Patriot Support Program? Yes, we are. Hi, everyone. And I'm sorry, I'm in a conference, so I'm out in my car and trying to not let my phone overheat. So I'm sorry. Um, my name is Alexa. I am in technology struggles. I am the point of contact for Holly Hill Hospital here in the Triangle area. So I'm going to make this information as concise as possible. And then I can also send out some of this information um, electronically as well. I am a visual learner myself. 
So Holly Hill is a mental health and psychiatric facility located here in Raleigh. Um, we average about 220 to 230 patients a day. For our inpatient, we see ages five and up. And for our outpatient services, we see ages 13 and up. Um, and so we offer a couple of programs for veterans specifically. So first, I want to highlight the Compact Act. Um, the Compact Act is an act that was passed back in February of last year, and that is for um, service members or veterans who are specifically dealing with suicidality. And what the Compact Act is, is essentially, if they're experiencing suicidality, um, veterans can seek care outside of the VA, and we will bill the VA directly for their stay and they do not have to be enrolled in VA benefits to receive this. Um, and again, it has to be specifically for suicidality. There are a couple caveats. Um, they need to have at least served two years and any discharge other than dishonorable. However, the third caveat negates the first two. So the third caveat is if their suicidality is directly stemmed from a trauma incurred in the military, it negates the first two. So they could have incur you know, incurred um, a trauma in the first you know, two weeks, a sexually based trauma in the first two weeks of their service. It you know, lead led to a dishonorable discharge. If their suicidality is linked to that, then there will be no cost for their treatment. Um, and then building upon that, like Brooke said, we are very excited to be starting a Patriot support program. Our tentative start date is August 1st. It will be a 16 bed unit, but I think we're going to start with 12 beds. Um, the, our chief medical officer, Dr. Moderum, he is actually a veteran himself. He's in the U.S. Army Reserve. Um, this unit is going to be 18 plus. It will be co-ed. Um, and we're very excited. I have seen there's a new workout room at Holly Hill. So full of free weights and treadmills and bikes, um, which is very exciting. Um, we accept TRICARE, Humana, Champ VA. So we accept, you know, a lot of those or all of those insurances. We also accept every commercial insurance, uh, Medicaid, Medicare. Um, so yeah, we are very excited about that. Eventually we're hoping, um, we're planning on that being a 32 bed unit. So um, we would like to see that double. Um, and that is for active duty and veterans. Um, and then of course, when it comes to spouses, family members, dependents, what have you, we have you know, those inpatient and outpatient services that we offer as well. So trying to, you know, offer the full continuum of support for the entire family. Thank you. Yeah. So one of my questions that I always ask is, do you only serve veterans? Do you also serve family members? Do you serve the guard, the reserves? So Terry, I know you mentioned briefly, um, you said something about spouses. Do you help provide dogs for spouses or did I misunderstand that? No, that is, okay. that is correct. Um, we know that um, post-traumatic stress or, or the traumas of uh, uh, post-service uh, affect the whole family. Mm -hmm. So there are spouses who've actually come down with post-traumatic stress due to trying to care for a loved one. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a... Um, documentary on CNN, it's called The Uncounted. So that includes, uh, they talk about mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, children, mm -hmm. even children committing suicide mm -hmm. as a result of uh, experiencing trying to care for a loved one mm -hmm. um, that is suffering. So yes, so if it's not a member of the family, mm -hmm. even a child who may be suffering, then yes, we will actually supply service dogs for family members as well, immediate family members. Thank you. Yeah. And then, um, Alexa, you said active duty and veterans um, under this Patriot support program will, is it, it's a, no family members in that. They could just go regularly into Holly Hill, other, okay. Yep, that is correct. 
Okay. I just like to make sure. And Adam, can you talk to us a little bit more about, you said you've been going into the military, into the community and, and connecting with people and talk to us a little bit more about the Medicare, Medicare expansion and what that's looking like. And, you know, are you attending events? Like, what are you doing to to get that in front of our veterans and exactly um you know for example the uh the balloon you know festival that we recently had you know so uh just setting up you know the tent the table and getting those information you know out there for people that may have medicare and medicaid mm -hmm. uh and you know we do have um uh dual snip uh special needs plans that pretty much will if you have both will cover you know all your expenses as far as uh, medical and uh, including dental prescriptions and things like that so yeah just getting the word out and there's a lot of people um uh, may not even know that they are, are eligible for Medicare mm -hmm. Medicaid. So, getting that first step going. So, well, asking the right question: you know, what's your what's your situation? What's your household income? And things like that. And and helping them, you know, get online, helping them get set up and apply. Because uh, a lot of folks, wow, I didn't think you know, I would be able to do this. So, with the with the expansion, um, it has made uh, a lot more people eligible now. So, just getting that word out is is our focus on this part. Yeah. Excuse my lack of knowledge on this stuff. So I'm just going to ask, um, do you see people who, um, do you tend to have a tendency to sign more people up who are VA connected or are they not VA connected or is it a little bit of both or? Well, um, it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, if you have, if you retire military or track care, that's kind of a different situation. But if you just have, um, you know, uh, veterans benefits mm -hmm. like myself, um, uh, uh, any of Medicare eligible or dual eligible, mm -hmm. it, it, it gives you the opportunity to use civilian doctors and things as well. Okay. Um, yeah. the, the, the medications on the, on the veteran side is great. You know, it's mail order. You can go online and, mm -hmm. and get that taken care of. So we have a plan that's medical only uh, available so they can just get that outside uh, care. Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, it, unfortunately, um, with, with the VA, uh, the, the, it's a limited amount of, of doctors and physicians. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time sometimes to get in to see Position. So having the opportunity to, uh, you know, just walk in at a, a facility and, and see uh, city care is, is, a, is a big bonus. For them. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and so, um, Terry, what is the protocol for someone to access your services? What's the... Yeah, so, so all you have to do is just go to our website, www.vetsforvetsunited.org, and uh, you will actually see um, under enrollment, you'll see an inquiry form that will pop up and you just click on that. I think of the, on the top menu it says what we offer and then the down, drop down will say enrollment and then an inquiry form will pop up and you just fill out that basic information, send it to us and we can get you on the wait list. We do have a wait list actually, um, unfortunately, um, but we can get you on the wait list and sometimes we can get through that past and then what we think you can. So okay. please go ahead and reserve a slot. Great. And Alexa, how about you? What's, I mean, just walk in, like what is the process for a veteran to come into Holly Hill? Or, and I'll put this question out also, you know, if we're working with someone and we identify that they need to access one of your services, do I send them to your website? Do I make a phone call? Like what, what should we be doing? Call me. Excuse me, call me. Mm -hmm. I am your point of contact for um, Holly Hill and what I'll do is I'll get the patient's name, date of birth, their insurance, and then just a brief synopsis from you of what's going on. I'm sure y'all can surmise that sometimes stories change between point A and point B. And so I like to get as much information I, as I can from the provider to relay to our intake team, just so they know the full scope of what's transpiring. Um, I'll confer quickly with our intake to, you know, make sure that we have the bed availability to ensure that our services are really going to be the best fit for the, you know, this patient's needs. And then, of course, I will, you know, if this is, you know, they're coming in, you know, experiencing suicidality, this would fall under the Compact Act. I will um, make sure to communicate that to intake, highlight, underline, bold, asterisk. Um, and so just so. I can, you know, have that communication with intake and then I will give you a call back immediately and kind of relay, all right, we have a bed availability, you know, if you want to, you know, send the patient over to Holly Hill, I'll, I will also refer you to our website. We do have resources for what to expect, what to bring, what not to bring. And we also have a visual tour on our website, which I think is just so nice 
for providers, for family members, what have you, for the patient themselves, if they want to, you know, see, you know, where they're going to be and what that space looks like to have that visual. Um, I also will remain a point of contact throughout the patient's day. Um, one of um, something that I do is I coordinate care for patients. So when patients come in, they fill out their intake paperwork. There's a box on that paperwork, which allows them to write their outpatient providers. So if they already have an established therapist, a doctor, what have you, they can write that information and that gives me consent to call. So I'll call and say, hey, we have a mutual friend here at Holly Hill. Here's the name and phone number of their therapist on their unit. And so that way their established provider and therapist at Holly Hill can coordinate care. But I truly like to underscore as much as I can, how much I'm a point of contact. I say everything from, you know, a potential referral to if one of your patients lost a sock at Holly Hill, call me and I will get on that. Um, anything I can do always, that's what I'm here to do. Thank you. And Adam, how about if we want to get more info, is there something on their website that they can fill out? Is there a form? Do we send them directly to you? Yes, you can send them directly to me. Okay. I'm happy to. Uh, I'm, uh, in Johnson County, and I'm, my area is uh, pretty much east mm -hmm. of there, but I will go anywhere. If, if someone reaches out, it doesn't matter. In North Carolina, I'll, I don't want to get to them. Get them to me. I love that. I love hearing that we can, you know, sometimes it's easier to send someone directly to another person mm -hmm. or to do like an email intro. Sometimes, you know, someone says they want help with something and then they kind of backtrack. So having that, a little bit of accountability helps too. So I, I, I love that. So I appreciate all of you saying that we can send people directly to you. <laughs> I appreciate that. So um, I think one question that I always highlight as being, um, I think one of the most important questions that we ask in these meetings is how can this group specifically um, help you all with struggles? You know, what gaps do you see? What can we do to help minimize those gaps and struggles? um for the work that you do um because we're all here listening we want to learn and help and what can we do to help you with your with what you do who would like to go first i can go first okay okay um so one of the uh, gaps that we have is with the administrative support we're a very small charity so at this point a majority of our funding comes from grant writing mm -hmm. I'm the grant writer. <laughs> um, so we need to hire a grant writer, but uh, at this point, we cannot hire administrative support. Um, so it would be wonderful if uh, if anyone knows of people, uh, dedicated volunteers who want to stick in there for a long run, who are good at different administrative mm -hmm. um, duties. That would be extremely helpful um, for us until we can acquire enough money in order to hire staff. We're at a point now where we really need to be able to hire staff. Um, the majority of the uh, uh, grantors really want the uh, funding to go towards program directly to program costs. It's hard to find funding for administrative costs. Um, but uh, my understanding is that some organ uh, some grantors are now understanding how important it can to program without okay. having the administrative <laughs> part. Yeah. Um, so, um, but if anybody knows of any anyone who has the time, it takes a lot of time on um, serving on the board. Board is uh, always uh, wonderful as well. It has different skills and talents that could be very helpful for mm -hmm. you. Happy to talk with people about that as well. And of course, promoting any of our fundraisers through email, <laughs> um, all of the social media sites, just trying to reach as many people as we possibly can to let them know what kind of work we're doing would be extremely helpful. Have you heard of Activate Good? Yes, we are actually members of okay, Activate Good. Good, good. Because that's how we we have found our bookkeeper from there, and she has been with us for years. I know you, oh, long term is, and I know it's not as many hours as maybe someone, but it it was a really good connection that we used for for Activate Good. Yeah, so we actually have a couple of volunteers from Activate Good as well. Good. Yeah, it's awesome. It offers awesome service to the yeah, fund. Good, yeah. I was gonna say try that for and your volunteers in the Durham as well. Oh, good. Um, I, the name has changed. I can't remember really what their new name. Okay, mm -hmm. good. I'll keep my eyes and ears open. Oh, do any of your board members have experience on the grants? No, we don't have one. No, we don't. We have board members that have experience on grants. Um, so yeah, um, but it'd be nice to be able to hire um, people that uh, event planner, um, mm -hmm. you know, fundraising coordinator, mm -hmm. a grant writer. Um, those are some of the vital things that you really need to have in place in order to, yeah. to grow. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
Adam, do you have any suggestions on, on gaps that we can help fill or? Well, on, on my side, really just being like invited to this this meeting mm -hmm. and the events and things and just keeping in contact. Hey, this is what's going on. Is very true. Very helpful. That's, that's, uh, we just, I just need to know. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. Thank you. And Alexa, how about you? Any struggles or gaps that we can help fill this group together? Not that I can say. Um, I was going to say, I feel so much that, you know, we're here to be a resource to you all. Um, you know, so much, um, you know, I'm here to help support the work that you all are doing. And so I thank you so much for including me. Um, you know, I really appreciate it and look forward to, you know, our continued partnership. Absolutely. What questions do we have from the group? <clears throat> Anyone online have questions that they'd like to ask? Today. I bet you people are sitting at the beach. That's why their cameras are <laughs> Hey, this is, We're not this is all Siobhan. Hey. <laughs> Hey, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say um, thank you to, to all of the panelists, but specifically a shout out to Holly Hill. Um, I am the mother of two children who had their dad go to six combat tours and it had a real strong effect on our youngest. And Holly Hill was there when my baby was really struggling and came back stronger from the program. So I just want to say thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you for relaying that. that. That means a lot to hear. And I'm glad to hear that, that they're doing better, that they got the help they needed. So thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have a question um, either, but I do want to thank you for, for having me here to um, share our mutual with so everyone. Thank yeah. you very much. And thank you all for coming and taking time from today to, um, to join the panel. Yeah. Did Renee, did you have a question? I noticed that she. Actually, I was making a comment. I apologize that earlier. I um, am extremely overwhelmed at the moment, um, getting ready and prepared for a Women's Veterans Day event for tomorrow. So I did just at least um, listen in. But I also wanted to acknowledge the doctor about we have, to, I'm with, a, excuse me, um, I'm with the Triangle Women Veterans Unit that's here in the triad. And we're a service organization that go out to the community to educate about there are women that have served in the military and there are women still currently right now as we speak and breathe that are serving. So several of our ladies are very well aware of Vets to Vet because they all have service dogs, the two that I'm referring to, Jennifer and Bernie. And so, um, I appreciate that service that she's conducting and look forward to actually um, reaching out to you for a couple of other referrals of some other veterans who might consider your services in the future. All right. Thank you very much. We, we are here. We do serve and give back. Thank, thank you. you. And good luck with the event tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone would like to come to the dog jog, please just get in contact with me. Um, you are, are able to set up a free booth if you're a nonprofit. You're able to set up a free uh, table. There will be several other veteran service organizations and animal rescue. So we are a veteran service animal rescue organization. So there'll be lots of activities uh, for both the two-legged and four-legged people. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to run. You can walk. <laughs> right. Or just come hang out. Yes. So just, yeah, just let us know if you'd like to set up a table. Does anyone else have anything that they'd like to share? Or oh, wait, let's see. Oh, yep. Siobhan said she would love to be a vendor. So with Wake County Veteran Services. I feel, I feel Stella. Oh, yeah. Look, and there's Stella. Can you all see her? <laughs> so Stella's in training. She's She's been trying to meet this young lady for uh, the past so hour. That's so good. Horses <laughs> and food. Let's not tell love. Hello, darling. Good. 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 You'll love it. Yeah. Any, oh, yeah. there she is. She's a lap. Yes. Yeah, she is. She really is a lap dog. She, she was trying to get all four of us. Okay, she could. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, this is Elton, not a question, but just a, a comment of a program. I'm not sure if everyone's heard of Camp Corral. 
which is a summer yeah. camp that was organized by uh, Golden Corral. Mm -hmm. For the last, what, 13 years or so, they've been putting on this summer camp for the children of uh, wounded, uh, disabled, and uh, uh, deceased veterans. And so all, you, all the kids have to do is just, you have to go online, apply for the camp, and it's totally free, 100% free. Uh, DAV, in partnership with uh, Golden Corral, has a program called Just Be Kids, or it's a scholarship fund to pay for transportation to make sure that the camp is 100% free to all uh, children who uh, to, who would like to go to the camp. So just go online to uh, campcorral.org uh, for more details. And Elton, is that a national program? Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it's a national program. Um, we're fortunate here in North Carolina, there are three camps in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two going on, I think, next week, or two weeks from now. Uh, one in Columbia, North Carolina, and one in a uh, silver near the mountains. I forgot what town it was. And then there will be a third one in August that will be in uh, Greensboro, Great. the uh, YMC, YMCA facility. Great. Thank you. Does anyone have any other announcements? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. I think we're we're wrapping up just a few minutes early, but if you have anything that you would like us to share with the group, please um, send it to me or Landry in an email, and we'll make sure to attach it with the um, with the big group email. And um, next month, our meeting will be on July 9th, and our topic will be veteran housing. Always a big one, right? So um, definitely plan to join us next month and I welcome anyone to come in person and enjoy an amazing lunch. So we hope to see you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye everyone, take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye, thank you. Thank you.